This is RTP. This is RTP 180. All right. Any Hindustani fans out here? Woo, yeah, we're here. All right. So let's get into it. Physics and music, a sitar's perspective. My name is Michael Griska. I'm your local resident sitar player. But everything that we get comes from our teacher. My teacher, he's not just my teacher. He's my mentor, my university. Teaches me everything I know. We spend all day together 24-7. Pandit K. Sridhar. Without him, I really want to know too much about what I'm talking about. So I just want to give a little gratitude. Now, before we talk about the sitar, I want to go over some physics terms, some basic understanding. There's two terms we're going to talk about, Fibonacci series and sympathetic vibration. Now, we musicians often refer to the Fibonacci series as the overtone series, same thing. But in this case, it is the sum of the two preceding numbers. For example, if we add 0 plus 1, we get 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 1 plus 2 equals 3, and so on and so forth into eternity. Now, can anyone guess the number after 13? Any mathematicians? 21, excellent, very good. Next part, sympathetic vibration. When a vibrating object causes a stationary object of the same frequency to vibrate. Now, let's break this down. If you look at this beautiful illustration, what you're looking at is two pendulums sharing the same medium. Now, if we put pendulum, and given that they're a state of rest, if we put pendulum A into motion, that energy will transfer up and over into pendulum B, and pendulum B will begin to swing. How does this relate to music and sound? In this picture, you have two tuning forks of the same frequency. If we bang tuning fork A, put it close to tuning fork B, it will vibrate and produce sound. And if you want to try this experiment at home, but you don't have tuning forks or pendulums, just get yourself some wine glasses, preferably large wine glasses of the same size. Put a little wine in it, invite a friend over, dip your finger in, run it across the top. It will make a sound. It takes practice, and there are some tricks, but it does vibrate. And if you have a nice, thin wooden table, it transfers the sound more, and you can actually get it to produce. So we talked about sympathetic vibration, but we're going to need to talk more about the sitar to learn about the Fibonacci series. So without further ado, what is the sitar? Other than being a classical string instrument of South Asia, and as much as I want to talk about the music, we're more interested in the components of the sitar. So it's made of hard woods, good for vibrating. Teak and tune woods are the most popular. It has about 20 strings made of metal. Also has about 20 movable frets held on by thread. Now this is interesting. So if you look at the frets here, there's horizontal lines on the frets or on the sitar, those are the frets itself. And you also notice that there's some gaps. Ideally, there would have been frets there, but we've taken them off for playing purposes. And as you see the frets descend, they the spacing of the frets are closer and closer and closer together. That is the effect of the Fibonacci series on the sitar. Yes, we actually tune the frets by ear into the Fibonacci series. Also, these large sound resonators, they're made of gourds. And if we look at this top upper gourd, also looks like a wine glass, doesn't it? Just a shorter stem, good for vibrating. But the stars of the sitar, the most important part, is the two large bridges. And what makes them so special is the curvature onto it. So if we look at the right edge of this large sitar, you can see the string in no little shadow. But as we get to this left leading edge, you can really see the shadow coming apart from the string. That is the effect of the Fibonacci series being displayed right there on the curvature. We actually file the curvature in. And it's what gives it its most classic and distinctive buzz sound. And it allows for sympathetic vibration to happen better. And the strings just freely communicate. So you can get an idea. This is the curve bridge of the sitar. These are the normal standard bridges. In fact, uh, instruments such as uh, banjo, violin, and guitar, they often have bridges similar to this. Just enough material to suspend the, the string. You can really see the difference. 
So what does this all mean? How does the work, how does the sitar put all this physics to use? So what happens is when we struck the main melody string and it vibrates, that sends the frequency, sound, and energy into the large curve bridge, vibrates the wood of the sitar, and that sound and transfer all the way up into the small bridge, and that, that frequency that was plucked of the melody looks for the string that was tuned to that same frequency and begins to sympathetically vibrate. So this is one of the reasons why the sitar has so many strings. We tune the strings for the melody, and, and they just act like a choir, giving support harmonies as background singers, no matter who we play for or where. And just a quick thought, as we often have pendulums and tuning forks in physics classrooms, maybe we ought to have some sitars in the physics classrooms. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. It's been Physics and Music, a Sitar's Perspective. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your time. Once again, my name is Michael Griska. It's been a pleasure.